Hey everyone, it's Bernard, aka Burn Dog, and I've been a little bit busy this week just working on some of the new audio modifications for the Game Boy Advance or AGB. First is this Helder Power Cleaner, and this is based off of the Retro 6 Dehiss Dehum kit that they're selling. It's not the easiest or most finessed and graceful install. So at Angry Helder, he came up with this uh, Flex PCB. And the next one is this new funny playing speaker. Supposedly it's 15% uh, louder and it's supposed to be clearer. But they refurbished three Game Boys in working order just to compare some sound. And I wanna share some of those comparisons with you. One will be direct line out recordings that I did and I shared the other day, but I did some new ones this morning using a copy of Tetris. Uh, because this title theme is pretty good for checking for silence and just a little bit more simple waveforms to extrapolate and investigate. First, I have a stock GBA. So this is just a regular screen and I kept the stock speaker and the stock capacitor configuration. It's all original and stock. So that is one point of comparison. That's sort of like a reference point. The next is a recapped board. So I replaced all the capacitors to the original values. So the original configurations, but I added the Helder mod to this as well as the funny playing speaker. So this particular Game Boy, uh, this off-white with white lens is going to have all of the mods, including the IPS screen. Because the IPS screen is pretty power hungry, it does introduce a little bit of other noise. And I figure that most of you who are watching this or interested in mods will be going the funny playing IPS route. The last one that I did is not too much different, but it's still an IPS screen and it does have the GBA power cleaner, but I opted for a one watt replacement speaker. I was going to show you what that looks like, but I seem to have misplaced. No, I can't find it. Oh well, anyway. Let's just jump into a quick test. For this, I'm going to hold these Game Boys up like where I would be playing them. So you would see at like this level at max volume and it's gonna go directly to this lav mic that I have clipped to my shirt here. Let's go ahead and start with just the Game Boy Advance boot up sound for all of them. Okay, so first up, this is the stock Game Boy with no replace caps and the original speaker. So basically, this is your original Game Boy pre-modification. And we're gonna start and listen to just the boot up sound. All right, so that's that. So this one is Helder mod and IPS screen and funny playing speaker. So basically this one has every new thing that you could get. Okay, that's that. And then lastly, this is the same, except instead of the funny playing speaker, it uses your standard one watt replacement speaker. Okay, so that's those three. Let's start with the stock Game Boy. It doesn't sound great, right? I think we all can agree that the Game Boy Advance is notorious for how noisy it is. It has this low buzz, it has this low hum. It is sibilant. It screeches on Game Boy Color games from, I believe it's called the Shepherd effect, where it has this increasing tone. It's like a whine that just it ramps up and it just infinitely gets higher and higher pitched. Overall, not great. And this is why I haven't sold too many and modded too many Game Boy Advances. Let me go on a quick tangent here. Oh my God, I sound like another famous Game Boy modder YouTuber guy. Quick tangent, a lot of people 
are looking to improve their Game Boy audio, so how, the, the way they go about doing that is they buy some kind of amp module, whether it's the PAM or the retro modding one, which I bought, or the clean amp from Retro6. All of those things kind of just amplify existing noise in a way that doesn't remove or filter out any of the noise. So what you end up getting is even louder noise, and I don't think that's the goal for a lot of people who want to upgrade their audio. Sure, they might want things to be louder, but in my humble opinion, you don't want louder. In fact, you want quieter but cleaner, and when things are cleaner, then you can hear the details that you're looking for without having to crank the volume up. Moving on to the funny playing speaker versus the one watt replacement speaker. Both of these have the Helder mod. The Helder mod adds capacitors to the power rail so that it filters out some of the noise from the source before, I believe, before it goes to the, the audio amp itself. The result is much more noticeable using the same screen but I imagine most of you will be swapping out the screen, so I'm not including that data for this. The difference that I hear between the two, especially just on the startup chime, is the funny playing sounds deeper and fuller, but not in a clear way, not in a rich way, almost in a muddy, overdriven, bassy, blown out kind of way. Whereas the one watt replacement speaker does not sound as harsh, uh, but it does sound more clear and bright and sparkly to the point that some might find that sibilant or harsh to the ears. Personally, I prefer the sound of this. This will be especially apparent when we are doing some actual gameplay and listening to actual game music. For a quick comparison, let's just hold these up at about the same distance and I am going to turn one on and turn the other one on. And this will be off camera, so you can't really tell which one I'm doing. So it's sort of like a blind test. It'll, it'll help compare the startup sounds a little bit more. So here we go. I'll turn one on, then turn the other one on. Okay, one more time. One last time. Okay, so of those two, the first two times that I played each Game Boy, it was Game Boy A, then Game Boy B, then Game Boy A, then Game Boy B. The last time was Game Boy B, then Game Boy A. If you could guess, based on how I described the speakers, that Game Boy a, the first one, was the one watt replacement speaker, the unbranded one, then you would be correct. And that leaves the second one in the first test, so Game Boy B, is the, the funny playing speaker. Now this is a lot more apparent when you're listening to actual Game Boy music. So I'm going to insert some games into these and we will compare with like Game Boy Advance music, which is not great and has a lot of limitations with the audio mods that clean the, the audio up and the new speakers, it, it reveals those flaws a little bit more. So you can really tell just what the experience of gaming on these is gonna be like. Not that I play video games ever, but we'll see. Okay, putting that down and I'm going to mute that and start playing the other one. Okay, so that's that last comparison, but I don't know if you can tell, but I can tell that I prefer the sound of Game Boy A, which is the Astro City themed one, just because it doesn't sound as muddled and as harsh in a bloated, bassy way. If you want your modded Game Boy to sound closest to an original Game Boy, but you had to replace the speaker, then I would recommend the Funny Playing speaker just because it tends to recreate that fuller, warmer sound signature that you would find in an OEM Game Boy speaker. I personally prefer the one watt replacement speaker just because it sounds a little bit more clear to my ears as a result of a brighter and more analytical sound signature 
but some might find this a bit fatiguing or sibilant for long gameplay sessions. One reason I think that this might be the case, this discrepancy in... I should really find that speak. Okay, so I'm back out of my parts bin and I have the one watt replacement speaker. Let's compare the stock OEM Game Boy Advance speaker. It looks like this. It's a little bit thick and it has this tab that helps it fit into the housing. The funny playing speaker is basically the same physical shape except it is clear white and pink and red. Compare this to the one watt replacement speaker. It is very thin by comparison. The one watt replacement speaker is about half the thickness of the funny playing speaker. That could result in difference in sound because of the way that these fit into the shells. The funny playing speaker is designed to fit just as the original one would. And what it does is it fits perfectly to the point that it physically couples with the shell so that when this speaker vibrates, the sound conducts basically and vibrates through the surrounding plastic and it creates this like resonance reverberation effect. So it just sounds fuller. And you'll see some mod sites, they'll sell 3D printed brackets that you house um, this thinner speaker in to achieve that same kind of physical coupling with the plastic shell to get that fuller resonant sound. In Game Boy A, I did not have any physical coupling with the shell, um, whereas in Game Boy B, I did. So that could be one reason why Game Boy B has a richer and f not even a richer, just a fuller, like bassier, bottom heavy sound compared to the sparkly, bright, clear sound in Game Boy A. Another difference between the two that probably actually explains the difference in sound is that the replacement speaker that I have here is rated for one watt. And I believe the funny playing speaker is rated at 0.6 watts according to a vendor that I trust. That could be one reason why this sounds like it's being overdriven and just like too much. Sure, it might make things louder uh, because it's easier to drive maybe, but it, it's just, it doesn't sound good. It doesn't sound as clear and as pleasant as the generic one watt speaker that you know is like less than a dollar versus this which is around I think four dollars. So that's my thoughts on the speaker. Um, to recap I would go with the one watt replacement speaker if you're doing an IPS mod and you properly recap. I'm personally going to just use the funny playing one for aesthetic purposes because I think it looks cool and it sounds good enough. It's just when you really like try to get an audiophile critical ear for it I I personally prefer the generic replacement speaker. The other mod that I did was the Helder GBA Power Cleaner. However, this does not have all the capacitors that the Dehum Dehis kit from Retro 6 explains in the documentation. So I've ordered some similar ones as well as higher capacitance capacitors for one of the capacitors, I'm saying capacitors a lot, um, that Helder recommends. So his recommendation is a 220 microfarad cap on CP2, which is normally 100 microfarad. Retro 6 recommends coupling a 680 microfarad solid state polymer cap onto CP3, I believe. So the bottom right one closest to the power switch. Personally don't like that, it's a little bit wonky looking, but I'm gonna try it out if it filters out some of the added noise from the IPS mod that I mentioned earlier. That I will still test and probably give a much shorter update on that. I do recommend the Helder mod. I think it makes a big difference, especially if you're just sticking to a stock screen. But with the IPS mod, I think there's a little bit more work involved. Helder has more information on this mod and like how to do it yourself. But my recommendation is to just buy directly from Helder. It's much easier to just, and cheaper to get it from Helder. You don't have to do the fine tip soldering and all SMD work. It's not even that, long of a mod. It took me maybe five minutes, 10 minutes total. I've sped up the footage 3x. So realistically, it probably took me three minutes to do the soldering. And then, you know, it's just a couple more minutes for the installation onto the PCB itself. I dig the Helder mod. I'm iffy on the funny playing speakers. That's it. So thank you for watching this video. If you found it helpful, Give it a like, give me a follow, leave a comment. I want to hear what you think sounds better to you. If you're seeing this on YouTube, uh, please hit the subscribe. You can follow me at Burndoggers and on my main at Bernard.c. 
And you can also catch up with me on Twitter. Uh, it's just my name, at Bernard Kapulong. So yeah, thanks for watching.